This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So this week I've been experimenting with more patterned plywood. I've been curious for a while what would happen if I added colored veneers in between the layers and the results are pretty awesome. The process is not that hard. It can totally be done in your average wood shop. So stick around and I'll show you how. I recently finished up a coffee table build and I have a lot of scrap Baltic birch plywood. So that's what I'm gonna be using for this build. I've also got these dyed wood veneers that I got off the Rockler website. They sent these out to me and they're gonna be perfect for this project. I've been wanting to test this out for a little while because I really like pattern plywood, but I feel like it has a lack of contrast sometimes. You can't really see it from a distance. And what this is gonna add is, is almost like a shadow line into the pattern so that you can actually see the pattern a lot better. I've done veneering a couple times in my shop, but I wanted to try out this new technique of actually ironing on the veneer. And the first step in doing that is coating both the veneer and the plywood panel in wood glue. <laughs> okay, let's just do one of these at a time. One thing that I didn't anticipate is how much this veneer was gonna curl the instant I put glue on it. I panicked a bit and used these plastic bags to cover it with some weights on top, but that had some problems too. It's not gonna dry like that, huh? In the end, I settled on using some scrap bits of wood and some packing tape, and that worked a whole lot better. So the key for this technique to work is to make sure that the veneers and the, the panel are completely dry and then you go over the top of it with a very hot iron. I had it on the max setting for this iron and uh, I'm just using a bit of craft paper to protect the surface of both the iron and the veneer itself. My iron has an aluminum bottom on it and it's not really gonna affect the black veneer, but once I start getting into the colorful veneers, it could actually uh, rub off on the surface of it. This may not really matter for pattern plywood because I'm gonna cut it apart into a million pieces, but uh, if you were to do this technique for actual veneering to, to put a really nice piece of burl or something on a panel, uh, you're not gonna want to just lay your iron directly on it. got quite a bit more of the black veneer than the colored veneer. I just got these primary colors. The black veneer seemed to work fine, so I tested it out on that. And then uh, one thing that I discovered by the time I got to the colorful ones is that it helps to tack the front edge with the iron before putting the paper on top, just so that you can see where that is and you don't end up wasting a bunch of veneer from it overhanging the edge of the panel. The only problem that I had with this technique was that it kind of produced cracks in the veneer. I don't know why this was. Maybe it was from it curling up. Uh, maybe it's from, you know, putting too much pressure with the iron, but that was the only thing. I mean, it doesn't matter for this process, but it might matter if you're using a really fancy veneer on uh, a really nice piece of furniture. The first pattern that I'm gonna be showing is what I call the Alpine pattern. I already have done a full video on this pattern and I'll post a link right here so that you can watch it uh, if you wanna go into more detail, but basically it is a 45 degree mitered cut. I cut it on both sides of the panel and I keep flipping it over again and again to basically get this like trapezoid shape. Once I have that, I can tilt my saw blade back up to 90 degrees and then cut it again. Basically, you're gonna get two pieces out of each of these strips, and then you can glue those together again to form the pattern.
I've made this pattern several times in my shop and the best method that I've found for gluing it up is using some masking tape underneath the joint and making sure that that miter is nice and tight together. This is going to allow you the space to put the glue in, but it's also going to let it fold up so the joint stays nice and tight. And speaking of wood glue, I get this question all the time. This is just tight bond one. It's regular wood glue, nothing special. I think most wood glues should work just fine. It's just important that you use lots of it because the plywood, it does sort of absorb quite a bit. I also like to use a toothbrush to pull out any excess glue from inside the joint. If the glue dries in there, it's gonna be really hard to get out. And if you don't get it out, the, the pattern's not gonna glue up very well. I'm going to be cutting the pattern into individual pieces using the bandsaw, and I cannot believe I haven't thought of this before. I built this quick little hopper out of a cardboard box, and it was insanely handy. I let the strips dry for about an hour to an hour and a half, and that seems to work pretty well. They seem to be pretty stable at that point. Then I can cut them on the bandsaw using my bandsaw fence. I've got this set at about half an inch and that seemed to work really well. I, I did have a little bit of an issue keeping the, the, the strip square to the fence, but I figured out a solution and I'll share that with you in a bit. I built this jig in another video. I believe it was the hexagon pattern plywood video and I've been using it ever since. It works great. It's super simple. It's just a piece of melamine with a couple pieces of, of wood nailed to either edge at a square angle and I've got those covered in packing tape so that glue doesn't stick to it. I also have coated the melamine with a bit of paste wax. This isn't completely necessary but it does help with it releasing later. So shout out to Ashley. She came down to the shop for a little bit. Didn't get on a camera, but she was messing around with the parts and she figured out that you could actually flip the pattern halfway around and come up with this cool new pattern, which is the cool thing about pattern plywood is once you have the parts, you can mess around with them, find all sorts of different patterns. So that's what I'm going with. That's the glue up. And you can see on the left-hand side of the jig, I put a little black mark there and that's where I'm going to reverse the pattern. my best to keep track of how many were on the top and the bottom so that it would be nice and symmetrical and then I could expand it basically until I ran out of tiles. So I have glued these up by just sort of pressing them into place and they actually glue up pretty well, uh, but it's always nice to add a little bit of clamping pressure. So I added in a couple more blocks that have the packing tape on them and then I lightly put the clamps on and then slowly crank up the pressure on all sides. This video is sponsored by Squarespace and back when I started my business in 2015, the first thing that I did was I got a Squarespace website and it's honestly the best business decision I ever made. From online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Squarespace makes it super simple to open an online store. I was able to put mine together inside of an hour and now I can sell plans for my jigs, my shop cabinet, and my furniture so that you guys can build them too. All websites are automatically set up to work on mobile, which in my opinion is one of the best features because according to Squarespace analytics, almost half of 
my visitors either come from mobile devices or tablets, and I can rest assured that my website is gonna look good no matter what. When it comes to designing your website, you can pick from Squarespace's award-winning templates, which are easily customizable to fit your business. Visit squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash michaelalm to get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website. Thanks, Squarespace. Now back to the build. While I wait for the glue to dry, I'm gonna start in on those colored veneer panels. And for that, I'm gonna make a different pattern using a 60 degree angle. If you see my other videos, you'll know that this is the setup to make hexagon pattern plywood, and I have an entire video on that subject alone, which goes into, a, again, a lot more detail. But I'll cover the basics here. Basically, you want to set up with your 60 degree angle, rip one edge of your panel, and then use that panel to set the fence of your saw so that it's just touching those teeth when it rests flat against the bed of the saw. Now the hexes can be a little bit finicky, so before I cut my actual material, I usually like to run a piece of scrap wood through the saw first, and then I cut that piece into three individual pieces. That way I can make a full hex pattern. I quickly check those using a rubber band. The main thing that I'm looking for is, is to make sure that the joint is nice and tight, it's closed, and that there aren't edges sticking out on the sides. If the joints are a little open and you see a gap in there, that means that the angle of your saw blade is wrong. And if there are points sticking out on the sides, that means that your fence is set incorrectly. So you can make those adjustments, dial it in, and once you're happy with it, you can start cutting your strips. So there are actually two orientations that you can glue up this hexagon. I'm just going to stick with the with one style, and I'll show you the other style in a minute. This one is the MC Escher style cube, where they all link together. All of them are in the same orientation, all the all the strips. And once I get those together, I can I can rubber band them. And one thing that I realized is that I've got a couple of extra pieces uh, because my veneers were different sizes. I ended up with a different number of strips out of each panel. Since I didn't have three of any one color, I just decided to cut them into thirds, and that way I could glue them up, and each one of the strips forms a full glue up. over the bandsaw, I discovered that using a little piece of square plywood was super handy to push these through the saw. It not only acted as a way to square up the blank, but it also was a way to push it through the saw and keep my fingers away from it. Now one thing started to happen when I got to the blue one, I started to have the veneer pull up. And I, I wasn't really sure why this was happening, but it seemed like I should be able to just iron it back down and that might fix it. Sure enough, that took care of the problem and I was able to quickly get back to cutting. At that point, the first glue up was fully dry and ready to come out of the clamps. I 
I was so happy with how this came out. It came out way better than expected, and I just love how the black lines add almost a shadow line to the to the pattern. It's way easier to read the pattern, which is what I was hoping for. So after a bit of sanding, you can even see that it's a little bit iridescent. Uh, that This is just 80 grit, so as I move up the grits, it'll get more and more iridescent. I honestly didn't know if this technique was gonna work at all, and so after seeing this, it got me really excited to glue up the rest of the pattern. One of the things that can be a little overwhelming when you create these new parts is how many pattern options there are. As you rotate it, as you flip it, it, it changes the look of the pattern, and that's, that's the fun of this. So I spent a good hour or so just messing around with the different parts, coming up with a couple patterns that I was happy with. Fortunately, I had enough parts that I could glue up two separate patterns with this design. This first one turned out really cool. It's it's kind of uh, like rainbow-like because of the primary colors. I also was messing with uh, different orientations of the parts to sort of make this, this basket weave type look. The second one, I decided to lean into the, the Escher squares. Uh, I, I ended up doing them in sets of three by color and this turned out pretty cool too. Now, I really liked how those patterns were going, but I was super curious to see what it looked like on half-inch plywood. Fortunately, I had a bunch of red pieces left over from my veneer pack, and so I added those on with the same technique using the iron. So my theory with this is that the half-inch plywood is actually going to show off the veneer a lot more because with the material being thinner, the the veneers are actually going to show up more frequently in the pattern. I also wanted to test this out because I at some point would like to try and make knife scales out of, of this stuff and at the three quarter inch scale uh, I just don't think that there's going to be enough of the pattern showing on the side of a knife. So these parts are exactly the same as the previous glue up. The only difference is that I'm gluing them in two different orientations. One of them is going to be that MC Escher cube and then the other one will be sort of more like a V shape. At this point the panels were dry so it was time to pull them out of the mold. The first one came out great, no issues whatsoever. The second one had a small problem on one side. I didn't notice that the clamps had lifted up that edge, uh, but ultimately it, it doesn't really matter. I was able to flatten it out with the sander, uh, but it's just a little bit thinner. I am so happy with how these came out. They look amazing, and honestly, I, I didn't, I wasn't expecting results like this. These came out way better than expected. And if anything, the colored veneer actually allows your eye to see the pattern better than if it wasn't on there. Back over in the half inch plywood pieces, these were coming out great too. The, the red just really popped on these. And I decided to do two separate glue ups, uh, one of them with the Escher cubes and I, I'm doing a different design on this. The same pieces, but uh, a different orientation. You can get a completely different design. pieces I decided not to even pay attention to the pattern at all and just glue them up at random and this was super fun too it, it looks kind of chaotic in a good way um, this was also really easy glue up because I didn't have to pay attention to it all and uh, it's just just so happy with this technique results are awesome. I think this takes 
pattern plywood to a whole nother level and I'm super excited to explore this more. This one's my favorite and I'm really curious what, what other people liked. Um, I just think that the, the contrast with the black and the white looks awesome. Uh, but let me know in the comments down below what, what sort of pattern, what veneer style do you like? And uh, also let me know what project you'd like to see me make out of this stuff because I've got a bunch of it now and that will probably be the next video. Leave a comment down below. Big thank you to Squarespace. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters. As always, you guys are the best and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.